Hey, I didn't post a video last month, which is fine. I actually recorded one near the start of the month and I just, I'm just not sure if I really said what I wanted to say and I haven't had a moment to listen over it. Like I don't want it to be too like editing, self-censoring here, but I also want to You know, if I approach a sensitive topic, or, or like it's not, it's not like a political topic. I probably will find to do, it, but just like personal direction. Like I want to, I just make sure I actually say what I mean to say because it doesn't always come out right the first time. Um, or the second. Anyway, well, last month was. Last month was quite um well near the start of the month I had uh, some food poisoning I went out to lunch with the guys from the office and we tried a new place and I got very empty so yeah I was several days quite drained recovering from that and then and then I was fine for a bit and going along and then then I had a, a surgery which has been planned for a while I was you know it was all I, I was recovered in good condition for that and it went really well but I just needed to rest to recover from that and but it went really well and it was like Seems like it was healing up fine, and so the next weekend I really overdid things. Just like, um, yeah, basically looking after the children most of the weekend while while Tara went and got some time to herself, which she, she sorely needs. Um, and yeah, I overdid it. I. I think with, with chronic fatigue, you get you develop a lot of awareness of what your resources are and how to not exceed them. And sometimes you get it wrong. And yeah, at the the recovering from surgery was really using up most of my resources. So I, I exceeded my budget. I had a week or so of severe back pain and just like I developed an ear infection. It was just like <laughs> really bad. Um, but no, no, it, it feels hmm, it's not as bad as it has been sometimes. It feels tangibly different. Like when I when I use up all my resources and then I, you know, it's bad and I need to rest and it comes back versus when I get, when I let myself get stressed and then the total resources I have available to spend go down and even if I'm like maintaining my immediate health by being within the resources I have, it's, it's still kind of worse. So yeah, I didn't get stressed so like when, um, <laughs> And yeah, didn't get a lot actively done, but I had a lot of um, contemplation time. <laughs> and yeah, I've been just like, yeah, my head, my head hasn't always been clear to just like, think about life but like in the, in the moments when when I have been resting but conscious some, some of them I've been playing games I played um, Star Control 2 Aquan Masters just came out on Steam for free it's, it's something I played when I was a teenager and so it was nice to go back and play it's a really good 
game for when I was sick, to be honest, because it has a lot of... <laughs> a lot of downtime, a lot of... kind of busy work, and... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have the modern sensibility of respecting the player's time. Um, which was interesting to just re-experience because there's a lot that you get out of just just taking time. Like the the, the fragments of story being spread thinner lends them more weight. Um, makes it you, you get a sense of the vastness of the universe because you're like out exploring the galaxy and most planets there's nothing. And so when you find something neat, like, it gives, it gives a, a nice way to it. Um, well, yeah, I've been, I've been reflecting on that in relation to my own work. Like, I don't... I'm always pretty bullish on, like, no wasted time, no... efficiently be playing the game, <laughs> making interesting decisions as as densely as possible, and that's good. I think there's some places I can stretch it a bit, and... Still keep the philosophy of being, of not wasting, like, <laughs> like the, the wasting time is not the right verb if, if the time is being spent to get a, a sensation and to, to yeah, so it's, uh, spent time is not necessarily wasted time, and But yeah, I can. I, I think I can keep the philosophy of having a high decision density while giving some areas a bit more of that spaciousness. I'm still, yeah, I'm still thinking that through. Mm. So what am I working on? Um, yeah, this is. This, I, I've been really. Because I, uh, I, I, for like the, the latter half of last year, I had this publishing deal being discussed and then then, then happening, and like that was a, a clear direction for how I'm going to generate income. And right now, that's off. Um, I. I would like to release something, both like just to bring in some more money because that would help, but also just like for right. I'm I'm reconstructing my game development practice after it was stopped for <laughs> by, by a tragedy. Um, And yeah, turns out it doesn't work to just like jump back into it and expect to be exactly where I was. I I still have the the wisdom and the knowledge, but not the not the daily practice, you know? That's Yeah, if, you, if you've ever done like a, a daily exercise or a meditative kind of practice, 
like you as you do it day after day on a streak like it gets you get a lot of value out of that repetition just by feeling how you feel differently doing the same things every day it gives you a sort of reference point um, at the same time it it gets more efficient like you're you're able to accomplish as much in this time and yeah having the, practicing a, a, an art or craft is kind of similar like you, you, you get compounding benefits from doing it every day and yeah I, I, I've lost some of that just doing it just like It's basically something I had done for my <laughs> entire life up to that point. On maybe not a daily basis, but like often. And I stopped and now now that I've been able to start again gradually, carefully, I, I I don't have the, the life situation where I'm able to necessarily get focused time on it every day. I mean, I, I, I could, but it would just be at the expense of living in a lot more chaos. Um, Oh yeah, so like, when... When I started, like, what, what you might consider my, my game development career, like, trying to seriously have a focus on, on, on making things, I had already been making little things for years before that, and... It's like, I have this ambitious thing I want to make, I'm going to seriously focus on making it. And that was, there's, there's, there are some benefits to being ambitious, but I needed more time developing my skills, really. And after that, I, I got really into game jams and making lots of things quickly uh, that that developed my practice a lot quicker than <laughs> trying to make complicated big things and then I built I built up in a, in a natural way from making little things to making slightly bigger things to, to where I was able to do quite ambitious work and Now having stopped for a bit, come back to it, in the path that I was on, I'm ready to do some very ambitious work, but I'm not quite on that path anymore. I'm on, I'm on this meandering trail and Yeah, trying to trying to just jump straight into the ambitious work hasn't <laughs> I'm also not financially set up to just spend a couple of years making something either. So like I was in a great position, I could have done something great, it's not what happened, and now here I am. Um, What did I work on? I announced, perhaps prematurely, but it, it, it worked out in some ways. Um, a 
announced that I was doing a sequel to Single Part, and that's that's definitely something I want to do. But it's only worth doing if I do it. Like, like the point is to to get that game or or like an upgraded version of that game, <laughs> or a neighbor of that game. Like, like not necessarily. Changes aren't necessarily for the better, but find the right changes to make for it to to reach more people. And obviously, a big change is like visual production values, because that that is just what sells games, unfortunately. Um, and that takes time. But yes, yeah, it's, it's not it's not worth doing that if I'm just going to have it be a similar scale project to what it was last time, it'll just have similar reach, right? <laughs> okay, so... That's on the shelf until I have the resources to do it. Differently than I did it last time. Um, there's a few things from before, before the plague. Um, and Broglie, I still need to... Uh, it's embarrassing when things are only on iOS. Like, I, platform, like, you shouldn't do a platform exclusive unless the platform is paying for you and Apple isn't paying you for anything, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I... It was meant to be on Android. I developed it in a framework that said it did Android when I tried to compile it for Android. It didn't work. And it's definitely not worth spending a lot of time getting it working because when I release a game on Android, years after the initial release, it sells less than a hundred copies. That's... Thanks. Um, but a PC release will be probably worthwhile. Uh, it's just like uh, probably not like that worthwhile because people will see like it's there's a lot of complaints about them, like, ports of mobile games and it's really designed as a mobile like that's the the mode of play that it's designed for um, but I spent some time several years ago working on a landscape view just like arranging all the UI elements and I mainly <coughs> the main blocker there was that I hadn't finished designing all the expansion cards and I wasn't sure what UI elements I was going to need so I can definitely go back and release that now but uh, I spent a lot, long time on that game and I'm not, not feeling like working on it right now. Um, I was working on a scrabbly, like single player scrabble dungeon RPG kind of thing. And it's okay. Um, I would like to finish that up and release it sometime because if nothing else, I really like the drawings that I've done for it, but I think it needs another idea to really work. Um, yeah, so there's, there's stuff from the deep past that I could be working on, but that, that doesn't feel developmental at the moment. Um, I want to make something new and release it to to see not to not to show other people, just to to show myself that that I can. That's what I do. Like you know, it's it's just like you're training yourself. You have your consciousness is a very small part of you, and and, and most of the rest, like.
gets trained what to expect by what it sees you doing. And so if you use your small amount of capacity to direct yourself to finish work and get it out, then, then the rest of yourself sees that finishing work and getting it out is something you do and, and, and therefore keeps doing that. <laughs> So I was working on this puzzle game. Uh, the, the plan was to get it done in nine months, and it's had four or five so far, depending how you count it. Um, but yeah, in, in January I, I kept working on it for a bit and reached a decision point. And okay, basically there's, there's four player characters and they each have some different rules and, and a different action that they do. And for the game to work, all of the actions need to be able to accomplish some basic things. The first character has a very simple action, pick up an object, put it down. Uh, that's like the, the baseline. And the idea is all of the others have a, some capacity to move objects around. Some situations that they can do a bit more than the baseline, and some situations that they can't quite do what the baseline can. And so there's like they each have slightly different aptitudes. Um, the second character is really clever. It's The ability, I, I wouldn't have thought of it for this role. It's when, when, the, when the game was more figuring out direction, I was just putting in lots of abilities to see what would work. I, I put that in because it's a, a cool effect. And it just turned out testing that, that it was suitable for this role, which it, it's on, on the face of it, it's not obvious that it does. And I'm really satisfied with that. That's it's, it's really cool. The third one the, the concept was was simple it's just throw things up um, but it took a lot of iteration to find a version of that that actually accomplishes the right role in the game and I'm very happy with what I've found in the end uh, Like it's it's an ability that moves an object around and can put it up somewhere that feels completely different from the first one and has some things it can do that that one can't, has some things it can't do that that one can, and it just like has its personality, it feels unique and special. And then the fourth one is kind of a very basic variation of the first one, like it doesn't like it, it, it does the job. It does all the things that are essential for it to be able to do. It does some things that the first one can't. It can't do a few things that the first one can. But it doesn't feel heaps different. And those those two last categories of what it can do and, and the first one can't, what it can't do in the first can are quite small compared to the other two. The other, the other two uh, have much more distinctive character. It's more, it's more clear what they, what special that they can do. Um, it, it does the job. I could make the game with it. I would like to find something better for that role, and I've, I've tested. Twenty different ideas, like some of them quite 
out there and I haven't found it yet. Now, if I was still on the publisher timeline, I, because like there it was more important that, that it be done in a particular time than that I like take all the time to explore like the best possible versions of things. Um, if so, if it was still on that timeline, I would just drop that character. It'd be three characters, three characters that are good, really distinctive, and then the rest of the game would be easier to make because there'd be a factor of three rather than a factor of four in, in some of the combinatorial complexity. I don't want to do that because, well first Michelle's like really done a great, like, that's the character we spent the most time going back and forth on and I'm really happy with where it ended up. And the, the other special rules for that character are really flavorful and really, yeah, it's just like the main action isn't there. Um, so, I'd like to take some more time to see if I can find a good version of that. And I can't really proceed with building final versions of levels until the abilities you solve them with are nailed down. So. Since I don't have any time limit, I, I think that the right thing to do is put that also on the shelf and come back to it periodically and see if I can bash away at that. It's also because it's it's got professional graphics that's been done for it, like it, there's a certain level of polish and everything else that, that feels appropriate to respect that. Um, to make it feel cohesive and that's going to take more time so I I yeah I think it would be good for me to just make a normal me game not not being externally required to work with external people and just like make a game like like how I used to make to, to really get myself back into it to, to connect my new winding path with with what I was on before um, so in January I started Trying out some ideas for a deck buildy. It's not. Re it's going to be a lot of work, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. I I was like trying to trying to think maybe I'll make a just just like prototype something small like the kind of games I used to make and I can get that out quick and just just like I'll have released something and it's 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 not that small uh, you know it'd probably take 12 18 months um, the theme that's fitting it best so far is superheroes. Like, I'm not a big superhero fan, but, like, it's a trope, it fits certain things, and it seems like a superhero game. And if you're making a superhero game, like, there's certain graphic styles that are not anywhere near my expertise that that makes sense for it. So I'm like, well, maybe, maybe that would be a good game to collaborate with an artist who can do that visually and I mean so that's a promising prototype but I'm not 
I'm not sure it actually fits what I what I want to be doing right now. So I <laughs> set that on the shelf. Um, yeah, last last month while I was in bed, sick and recovering a lot, I was scribbling down notes, trying to figure out how I can just make a just a little game that'll be nice, that'll be satisfied with as a little game. And I came up with this cool idea. And it's, it's a really nice idea. It, it accomplishes a lot of the things that, that make a roguelike game work, but without the rogue battle grid happening in the middle. Um, I know, yeah, I, I mentioned, I, I try to avoid the topic, but it comes up obviously, that people are calling things roguelikes which are not in the roguelike genre anymore. Um, this is Kind of more like <laughs> it's it's not like those. It's 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 like the roguelike genre, but without the rogue dungeon rule in the middle. It's 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 interesting. Um, and I was like, yes, this is great. This is just like something that's small but that uses skills that I develop that I know how to make that it's gonna it's gonna work but because I was in bed sick I was not like ready to launch into programming on it straight away so I like just kept writing in my notebook you see where this is going uh, and I, I, I realized that this central mechanic that, that does the things that the roguelike genre does actually fits well with some other systems that I was working on that I was trying to fit into a roguelike a few years ago but didn't quite manage to get them working. They fit this better than they fit an actual roguelike. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's really cool. And then it connected up with another idea I was working on last year. Like, yeah, that, that, the, this system expresses that concept. That, this is beautiful. Starting to look like a big project. And I was, I was, I was sitting at the bus stop, just scribbling down some last. And I was like, oh, I probably won't do this. But what if it's amazing? It, like it really makes it really epistemic. It's like <sighs> I know I know what I want to work on, and like that's that's as. Like, that's bigger than now, it's bigger than any of the roguelikes that I've made. It's, it's really like on par with, you know, the big caves of Cuddy, like a dummy, like because it's, like, it's, it's all these systems interacting and like they, they're all systems that I've worked on that didn't quite go, but they, this solves that and it's going to be something I'm going to spend, like years of my life on at some point and it's going to be really worthwhile. I can't do it. <laughs> so, this week, this week I have, I'm taking some time away from home. I, like, I, I, I know I complain about Lisbon getting more expensive, like, the, the cost of living is, is, is more than double what it was when we moved here, but 
there's still some things that are quite nice, like, like I could just like travel here on on my public transport pass that's just like the same price <laughs> for, for for a monthly pass and and like it's not it's not the the high surf season so I can I can like get a hostel room quite cheaply and yeah it's a big it's a big job for for Tara to be the only parent at home for a few days but I am jamming that 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 I have a few days when I have no other responsibilities and I'm just gonna actually this actually this time actually this time I'm making something small <laughs> it's not gonna get out of hand it's just gonna be something I can I can make the core game will work by the time I go home and then free at at most six months to polish and release it, like like eight six eight hack size, like nothing bigger than that, and then done. And then 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 I'll know that I I'm making these games again. And that's the plan. That's the plan. Obviously that's not what I'm actively doing right now because I've, I've gone for a walk and I'm recording a video to, to say that's what I'm doing. But it's also about being here, not just, just being at a computer for the convalescence. Like I've, you know, I've just come out of a month of food poisoning, painful ear infection and surgery in my bones. Like. I, I, I have to also not overdo it, manage my energy levels and so now that I'm all psyched up for it, I am going back to my computer and I am going Okay, this, this was longer than I expected after this. <laughs> oh. No, honestly, like... As parents of small children, there's... We, we don't... We don't have enough time with our adult relationships and, and our work relationships. So like, <laughs> yeah, I've got like bottled up talking about games and <laughs> stuff that, that when I just like give myself some space to just like, <laughs> You don't have to sit for it, but like it, it does. It does feel more more real for like getting that out that 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 anyone might listen to it all. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs>